Hi everyone, today we're going to be talking about carbohydrates. Carbohydrates, when you think of carbohydrates, you probably think of things like potatoes, and rice, and cereal, and bread. All those carbs that give you energy. So that's what we're going to be learning about today. So where does carbohydrates, the name, come from? Well, basically, when you look at carbohydrates, it is a carbon and a water joined together. The carbon is always in a ratio of one to two hydrogens to one oxygen. So, the carbons, the hydrogens, and the oxygens are in a final ratio of one to two to one, and they are repeating chains of sugars. So if you look at three, H, two, O, three, if you multiply that out, you end up with C3H6O3, a 1 to 2 to 1 ratio. CH2O, 6 times, so 6 hydrated carbon, would give you C6H12O6, and that's glucose. Sugars, as we talked in our last screencast, sugars are also known as saccharides. And most carbs in glucose, glucose, fructose, lactose, ribose, any of those common examples. So first we're going to be talking about monosaccharides. Mono, you should saccharides means sugar. So a monosaccharide is one sugar, one simple sugar. That would also be a monomer, something in the last screencast. The basic sugar is glucose, C6H12O6. Glucose has a ring-like ring structure, you can see here, and on the corner of all of these empty parts of the ring, those all are just assumed to be carbons. So we should put carbon there, carbon there. And if you counted up all of your carbons, your oxygens, and your hydrogens, you end up with C6H12O6. Other monosaccharides include things like fructose, the sugar we find in fruits, ribose, the sugar we find in RNA and deoxyribose, the sugar we find in DNA. The second type of carbohydrate we're going to talk about is a disaccharide. Di means two, so two sugars. And when you bind two sugars together, you do that with dehydration synthesis, as discussed in the last screencast. You take away a water, and you stick, in this case, two glucose molecules together. Two monomers stuck together make a disaccharide. And when you put a glucose with a glucose together, you'll end up with one of the most important disaccharides you'll learn about this year, and that is maltose. Other disaccharides would be put glucose together with fructose to get sucrose, table sugar. If you put the lactose together with glucose, you'll make lactose. And of course, that is the sugar find in milk. You'll see their structural formulas here. Here's sucrose, here's lactose, and maltose. They all look very, very similar to each other. The last type of carbohydrate you need to learn about is polysaccharide. Poly, poly means many. So when you put many sugars together, Via dehydration synthesis, you can make one or four types of carbs. You can make starch, and you notice when you look at starch, 
got one long chain of sugars with, in this case, it's got one side chain coming off. You can make glycogen or cellulose. If you look at glycogen, you have a long chain of sugars with many different side chains coming off. Lots of side chains coming off of side chains. If you look at cellulose, it's just one long line of sugars joined together. And of course, we also have chitin. Chitin is a sugar we don't need to know too much about in this course, but it's interesting to look at. So we'll start with cellulose. When you think of cellulose, you might think of fiber. All plants in the world have a plasma membrane, just like cell membranes in animals do. They also have a cell wall. Cell walls are made of cellulose. Cellulose molecules are made from really long chains of glucose molecules stuck together. There's no side chains. It's just glucose attached to glucose, attached to glucose, attached to glucose, etc. etc. Now the link between these glucose molecules is different than it is in starch and glycogen. And mammals can't break this bond, and that's why we can't digest cellulose. So we call anything that has cellulose in it fiber. And that's what the little bacteria that live in our digestive system, E. coli, work with us to digest. So E. coli can digest the cellulose, and when it does that, it actually helps us make certain things in the body that we need. Next, let's talk about starch. Starch is also a polysaccharide, and this is how plants store their energy. So, if you have a plant, a very simple plant, we have branches coming off, etc. Here's the roots. Many plants will store their starch in their roots. If this were a potato plant, then it would be storing its starch in its roots. But dig up and eat for dinner. So plants store their energy as starch. If plants have extra sugars, and remember plants make their sugars by turning the sun's energy into glucose. If plants have a lot of extra glucose, then they will send that glucose sometimes to their roots, and then that glucose will be turned into starch and stored for later. So starch is made up of many glucose sugars linked together. And, and if you remember, starch has, again, a long chain of sugars just like cellulose does, but this time it has a few side chains coming off it. You might have one coming off here. And it has few side chains. That's how you would recognize a starch molecule. Glycogen, on the other hand, is how animals store their energy. Animals like us. And if we have extra sugar in our blood, we will take that extra sugar and we'll store it. We'll either store it or we'll store it in our muscle. Why would we store it in our muscles? Because that would be a quick energy source when our muscles need to do some work. If you look at a glycogen molecule, if you look at a glycogen molecule, you'll see that a glycogen molecule has many side chains. So again, long chain of sugars. But this time it's got a chain coming off here, chain coming off here, chain coming off here. And usually with glycogen, you would get glucose chains coming off of side chains. You get side chains coming off of other chains. Glycogen molecules are more complex. And I think of animals as being more complex, although they're not really. So animals store energy as glycogen. Glycogen looks more complex, so glycogen is an animal molecule. 
the last Holy Sacrament right, we'll talk about is chitin. Chitin in the living world, the chitin in animal and in fungus. And chitin is again more sugar canes, but this time they're, they're joining together with covalent bonds. It makes them really strong. And we use chitin to make exoskeletons and drugs, like this little here. We use it to make fingernails, claws, and beaks and birds, structures that are This lady has way too much chitin coming out of her fingernails. Why do our bodies need carbs? What's the function of a carb? Energy. If you take a carb atom, and you break the bond between sugar molecules, energy is released. And remember what and remember what our mitochondria does to sugar, to glucose? It turns it into ATP. The main function of a carb is to make energy. So here is an ATP molecule. And you'll notice it has sugar sugar and three phosphate molecules and there's lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of energy stored in this last bond between the second and third phosphate molecule and when that bond is broken energy gets released so ATP energy carbs make ATP energy biggest job and of course when you're talking about plants Carbs have a structural job as well, and that's to make cell walls. Cell walls keep plants nice and sturdy and strong and able to grow up against gravity. So make sure you come to class with your hot question about carbohydrates.